What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about exercise science, human anatomy, physiology, essentially the fundamentals of human anatomy and physiology. If you are a personal trainer or you are aspiring to become one, knowing these basics are crucial in order to effectively write workout programs and of course, provide safety for your clients. All right guys, before I get started, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please hit the like button, subscribe, let your friends know about me. And of course, if you are returning, please do the same as well. Again, I'm starting to roll out a bunch of different content as far as personal training goes, whether you are a personal trainer or aspiring to become a personal trainer. But I also want to add a plug in for those people that have other questions. I do provide an online mentorship for personal trainers or people that are looking to become personal trainers. You can book a phone call with me personally, and it will be in the link in my bio. I've taken a few calls already. Whether you just have like a few questions, whether you want to kind of dive into your career path a little bit more in depth or you want to check out some of the mentoring options that i provide if you are really trying to make a run at this like become a six-figure trainer etc i had that option available but again the link is in the bio below anyway like i mentioned earlier we are talking about human anatomy physiology some of the essential and fundamental things you should know if you are a personal trainer or aspiring to become a personal trainer so let's get started first things first let's talk about human anatomy. Our bodies are incredible machines composed of numerous interconnected systems. To understand how exercise affects the body, we need to know the basics. And here are a few key anatomical systems every personal trainer should know. All right, first, we have the skeletal system. The skeletal system provides the framework for our body, supporting, protecting our internal organs. It's going to consist of our bones, our joints, connective tissues, and knowing the skeletal structure helps us understand exercise mechanics and how different movements affect our clients' bodies. And then we have the muscular system. This system works hand in hand with the skeletal system, providing movement and stability. Understanding the different muscle groups and their functions helps us design workouts that target specific areas and achieve desired results. And the cardiovascular system includes the heart, blood vessels, and blood responsible for transporting oxygen, nutrients, waste products throughout the entire body. Knowledge of this system is crucial as far as monitoring heart rate, blood pressure, cardiovascular endurance, etc. And then kind of going in line with that is the respiratory system. The respiratory system enables the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. By understanding how breathing and lung function are affected by exercise, we can help clients improve their endurance and control. The nervous system basically controls all bodily functions. It comprises of the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spine, and then the peripheral nervous system. Understanding how nerves communicate with muscles is vital for optimizing motor skills and preventing injury. So that is just a very broad glimpse of human anatomy, the key systems that are like crucial to no, and you would definitely need to dive into it a little bit more, whether you are taking courses at a university, whether you are studying through certification, or just finding other courses on YouTube, online, etc. But knowing these systems is crucial, and there is no way I'm gonna break down in depth those systems right in this video, but maybe at some other point in the future. But I highly recommend different sources, textbooks, etc., to learn that information. But now that we have an idea of some of the basic human anatomy, we can get into the exercise science. This is obviously taking the application of human anatomy and physiology, and in the practical sense, how to design workouts effectively, knowing how the body responds to exercise. Here are some key principles to keep in mind. First one is specificity. The general principle of specificity is that the body adapts to whatever demand we place upon it. So if a client has a specific goal, the exercises that we are having that client do need to be in line with those goals. So the specific demand, the specific exercise that we are having someone do should be because of a specific goal. That's where that specificity comes in. If someone wants to get better at running, 
they're probably gonna do some stuff with running. And if someone's looking to increase their flexibility, we're probably gonna do things like certain stretches, certain eccentric loaded exercises. If someone is wanting to get bigger legs, it kind of makes sense to do lower body exercises. That's what that specificity is. Another principle is overload. The concept of overload is basically just increasing something. We're increasing over time, of course. We're increasing the intensity, the duration, the overall challenge on the body. We are just increasing that to, to overload the system, the nervous system, the muscular system, skeletal system, etc. Think about it this way. We have everyone in this kind of middle tier where everyone's going to be between these two lines. On the lower line, on the lower level, is where you are basically not getting anything out of it. And then on the higher level, well, people are basically reaching the ceiling. This is where injuries can come in. They're basically overreaching at a certain level that's beyond their physical capability. We don't wanna to be too low and we don't wanna to be too high. The ideal overload is somewhere in between where it's it's going to challenge the, the system, but at the same time, be not too much so that the point that the system basically breaks down. Think about how much load it's going to require for your bones to essentially break if you were gonna do something. So being in this comfortable zone right here is how we're going to avoid injuries. And that's still the premise for the overload where we know exactly where that comfort zone is. The next principle is progression it is very closely tied to overload, but we are basically progressing the demands on the body. So in any sort of exercise, we can basically improve something or increase something, the demand on the body. So progression is just something that will occur over time and it can occur in multiple different forms, whether we are increasing the weight that we are lifting, whether we are increasing the reps we are doing, the sets, the frequency, whatever it is, we're basically doing more than what we were doing. That's just the principle of progression. And then the next principle is individuality. So this is where obviously personal training comes in because everyone's body is different. Everyone is anatomically, morphologically different and preferences go into this consideration as well. Knowing how to accommodate those preferences or the goals, anatomical structures and limitations. So we can adjust a squat to be catered specifically for this individual. It's not what the textbook says, what this individual should be doing for their goals and their needs. And then let's let's throw in another principle in there as recovery. A lot of time people that are doing personal training or even trainers themselves, they are so fixated on the work output that is being done that they completely disregard the recovery. And I'm not, I don't mean completely disregard, but not taking into the account the ratio of work to rest. If someone is working out like every day of the week and they're not getting the adequate amount of rest, we're gonna have diminishing return. It's one of those things as a personal trainer, you need to know that if someone hasn't worked out in years and they're coming into the gym, if they train four days a week right off the bat, their output is four, but realistically their recovery time might be more like four days. So basically they might be working out every other day, but it takes them a few days to actually recover, or they're just doing more than what they're actually able to recover with. Taking into consideration that work to rest ratio is important as far as the exercise science goes. Not only knowing how fast people recover, how well people require, and the things that will help with recovery, like sleep, nutrition, etc., but also how that recovery differs from individual to individual. All right guys, so just remember human anatomy, physiology, and exercise science is just a foundation for the knowledge of a personal trainer. Understanding how the body works and these principles, you'll be able to help your clients achieve their fitness goals in a effective and safe way. And like I've mentioned in other videos, a lot of people, a lot of the clients do not want to know the ins and outs of the exercise science, the human anatomy and physiology. They might have some questions. They might be curious about it just to know how their body works, but they don't really want to spend the time to dive really deep into it, which is why you as a trainer need to be the one that has this, this in-depth knowledge of exercise science, human anatomy, and physiology, etc and you know how to apply it so that someone's fitness goals can be achieved that's basically why they are paying you otherwise they'd pay for a textbook and they would read the textbook themselves which no one is really going to do or most people won't do they're going to hire someone that did do that or they would assume did that and if you yourself are a personal trainer you're certified you're working at a gym whatever and you do not have the 
adequate knowledge and the expertise of exercise science concepts, those people might seek someone else that does. And that's where that kind of competition in personal training comes. You need to have the knowledge to where people will trust you to know exactly how you are going to help them achieve their fitness goals. All right guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. Obviously there's gonna be a lot more to the exercise science, the human anatomy physiology, but that's not what this video was for. This is just a general basic fundamentals that you should really know. Again, please hit the like button, subscribe, let your friends know about me, and until next time.